So the other day I was going through some pamphlets that I've collected over the years from visiting historical sites around New York City. And this one in particular caught my eye. It's the pamphlet that you receive when you visit the General Grant National Memorial in Riverside Park in New York City. It's been a couple of years since I've been there, but this pamphlet reminded me of how dope Ulysses S. Grant was as a person and how stunning his memorial is too. So since Memorial Day weekend is coming up, I figured that I would talk about this memorial and maybe convince you to visit it this Memorial Day weekend. If I could sum up a visit to Grant's tomb in one word, that word would be surprising. I admit that I don't take the best photos, but look at this place. It looks like someone stole a monument from Washington DC and plopped it down in New York City. Like, what is this place doing here? It's easy to stare at the facade of Grant's tomb forever, but you'll be further blown away once you go inside. Inside of Grant's tomb is almost like a temple. There's this yellow heavenly glow that's coming from the ceiling and all around the dome of the tomb are portraits um, of important moments in Grant's life. It kind of gives Sistine Chapel vibes, but in an American way, if that makes sense. I'll admit that it gets a little creepy when you go down to the basement level of Grant's tomb, because that's where Grant's and his wife's ginormous coffins are. And they're surrounded by the busts of Grant's favorite generals, which I like as a concept because they're eternally watching over to Grant's. But in practice, you don't want to stay down there too long. You, you want to go back up to the, the good vibes on the first level. <laughs> But wait, there's more. Across the street, there is a visitor center that you have to see because it has all of this information about Grant's life and the gift shop. But you'll find out even more if you talk to the National Park Rangers that are at Grant's tomb because they are full of information and they're friendly. Shout out to the National Park Rangers. Anyway, let's talk about Grant, the man himself, the man of the hour, the man of the tomb, <laughs> oh, that was excessive. <laughs> um, anyway, learning the details of Grant's life was probably more surprising than seeing the beauty of the tomb itself. I don't know about you, but I used to assume that the great impressive people in history always started off as impressive. Like they were impressive little kids, impressive teenagers, and grew up into impressive adults. Learning about Grant's life changed that narrative for me. Like, Grant was far from impressive, <laughs> at least early on in his life. He was an ordinary kid, a mediocre student, and then when he graduated from West Point in 1843, he struggled to find employment that suited him and that could also put food on the table for his wife and four children. Like, Grant was a mess. He was on the struggle bus, and if the Civil War didn't happen, we probably would not be hearing about this guy. Because his true talents lay in the art of war. Military history is not my jam, so I'm not going to go into Grant's strategies and what he was like as a commander and yada, yada, yada. But there is a pretty good podcast episode from abridged presidential histories that goes into all of that if you're interested. But after the war, Grant actually turns out to be a pretty strong supporter and enforcer of ensuring that African Americans got their rights as US citizens. While President Andrew Johnson was all, let's forgive and forget the Confederates. General Grant was actually down there in the South enforcing reconstruction and making sure that African-Americans got their rights. So this easily led him to becoming the Republican nominee for president in the 1869 presidential election. And while he didn't have a scandal-free presidency, he left office a pretty popular man. After leaving the presidency, Grant took a world tour. He met Queen Victoria, he met Emperor Meiji of Japan, and he even went to Jerusalem, being the first president to do that. But then he came back and his life took a turn for the worst. 
Grant was swindled out of his money by this Bernie Madoff style dude. And around the same time that he learned he was broke, he learned that he had a terminal form of throat cancer. Like, God, why? <laughs> why beat the man while he's down? Grant was determined not to leave his family destitute. So he started writing his memoirs in the hopes that people would buy the book and his family would have that money to live off of. So he started his writing at his apartment in East 66th Street in New York City and ended up finishing it in upstate New York um, in Mount McGregor. Grant died just four days after completing his book. And he didn't get to live to see that his memoirs actually made his family $400,000 which is around $10 million these days. So they're pretty set. Go Grant. So Grant died in 1885 and there was a huge hoopla. In New York City, where the funeral procession was taking place, over a million people came out to see it. And when it came time to determine where Grant would have his memorial, all these US cities were battling each other out. You would think that the obvious choice would be Washington, D.C., because Grant was a president and a military hero, but one of Grant's final wishes was to be buried with his wife, Julia. But because Julia was a woman, she couldn't be buried in any of those military cemeteries, because that was the rule at the time. Long story short, New York City's mayor at the time, William Russell Grace, made Julia Grant an offer that she couldn't refuse. A neoclassical mausoleum on a hill overlooking the Hudson River. Sounds pretty peaceful, right? And let's not forget, it would also have a spot for her once she passed away, just like Grant wanted. Despite Grant's popularity while he was alive, fundraising for the mausoleum was pretty slow, and it wasn't completed until 1897. Reminder, Grant died in 1885. <laughs> but everyone came out for the dedication of Grant's tomb. And for a few decades afterwards, it was the most popular spot in the United States. Everyone would come visit it. Today, not so much. Grant's tomb was severely neglected by New York City from 1960s up until the 90s when they found some money to do some restorations. It's in a lot better shape now, but hardly anyone visits it. The last time I was there, it was just me an Italian couple, and a national park ranger that worked there. I mean, it made for a pretty peaceful visit, but it's also really sad. Ulysses says Grant was a pretty interesting person who deserves to be remembered. And at the very least, his tomb is stunning. So this Memorial Day weekend, or whenever you're watching this, make a trip up to Morningside Heights to see Grant's tomb. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in getting to know New York City better, like this video and subscribe to this channel. I talk about New York City travel and New York City books and give mini history lessons about the city here on this channel and also on my blog. So follow me there too. I'll see you next time.